apostle, Nikki Thundervestaism, has been called to demonstrate the supernatural power of God in South Africa. His purpose is to teach, train, equip, and send leaders and believers to bring the supernatural power of God to their community. Get ready for your supernatural Kairos moment. Well, this is Pastor Nicky van der Vestas and welcome again to Kairos Moments. Today and the next couple of weeks are going to be totally different. The glory of God is going to touch you right where you are watching in the next couple of weeks. This that we are about to broadcast to you is called the movement of the supernatural. The movement of the supernatural is a very powerful movement that's about to take place around the continents of the world. The Lord spoke to me in 2014 and He said, I want you to carry the movement of the supernatural to cities and to continents of this world. You know, the word revival has really become such a, you know, a, a low key word. Everybody uses the word revival. But there is a movement coming. A movement is something that cannot be stopped. A movement is something that happens in series. It's like a tsunami that comes. And I believe this is now the time where South Africa and Africa and the continents of the world, Europe, they're going to see the movement of the supernatural happening in their cities, in the churches, and in the continent. So I want you to get ready in the next couple of weeks for the glory of God, the supernatural to come upon your life, upon your business, upon your church, upon your family. This really is a movement of the supernatural. What the Lord has spoken to me is, is to start the movement of the supernatural. Now firstly, it's not an NDCFC thing. It is not a church thing. People from all denominations come, from all races come, from all cultures come to the movement of the supernatural. It's not a church thing. It is a movement of the supernatural. If you are hungry for the glory, if you are hungry for the supernatural power of God, then I'm speaking to you. So I want to take you into a couple of our services uh, where the movement of the supernatural has taken place. It is the God of the supernatural. Our module three is coming in August. I want you to come and be a part of that. Book your tickets, book the hotels, book everything you can and be a part of the movement of the supernatural in August. God is stirring up the atmosphere for the supernatural to take place again. You know what, even your kids, they are not following just a normal star. They want a superstar. They want Superman. They want the Spider-Man. They want the superheroes. Why don't we show them that Jesus Christ is also the superhero? And this movement of the supernatural, once again, it's not a church thing. It's not a denomination thing. It's of all cultures, all races. And I'm speaking to pastors here today. Because you need to understand what's happening here is supernatural. This is, this is 48 months ago we opened this building. 48 months ago. Dead free. Oh, nobody, nothing, and we had uh, 150 people 48 months ago. 48 months ago, 150 people attending church. 500 on the books, 150 attending. So, now we, I have got 20,000 people. Yeah, how many people are in your church? So, <clears throat> That's not what we do here. If you're in church, you are a member. There's a lot of, we, we can be thousands of people because we have a lot of, we've got a big database. But if you're in cells or you're involved, you are counted as a member. So that's just how it works. So 48 months ago, 150 people. 48 months later, we've just probably crossed, going to cross 2,000 active members. Once again, active people, involved people. More on the books about that. That is supernatural. Whether you believe it or not, sitting in a 30 million plus building, debt free, having the glory of God, drawing our plans now to extend the building and go bigger and go further and, and, and expand to the north, south, east and west of our cities and plant churches. That's what we are doing in 48 months. Why? Because we went from the level of faith and the level of the anointing. And we shifted to the level of the glory of God. And in the glory of God, listen, there is no flesh. If you ask me, how did you grow the church? I don't know. Because it's not me. 
in the anointing. I used to work and we couldn't go past 500. But when the glory of God came, guess what happened? We quickly went quickly, quickly. Every week people are coming to this church and getting saved and, ba and baptized. We baptize every Saturday people. Every Saturday. Sunday, people get saved. So it's like this. Sunday gets saved. Tuesday night, they go through a baptism course. And Saturday afternoon, five, four o'clock, they get baptized. Every week, people are being baptized in the church. Every week, we baptize people. Every week, people get born again. Why? Because of the movement of the glory of God. And I'm telling you, pastors, here, if you can just make the shift. If you can just get out of the way and say, okay, God, this is not really your church. You run the whole thing and you move out and you get an encounter with God. You'll see what's going to happen in your ministries. I'm taking Pastor Tisha. When he started joining our, our family here, he's in the north. He's got a great church in Randburg. And we are preaching there on Sunday. My son in the faith planted that church. When I preached for him, when we got connected, we started in the school hall, right? And from the school hall, they've got the most beautiful facility in Randburg. Malabongwe Drive, right next to Waterworld, prime spot, but because of the glory of God that took them out of a school hall and the right associations into the dimension of property and of wealth and of growing. And I'm telling you, I declare that upon every one of you here tonight, supernatural growth, supernatural acceleration upon your life. And may the glory of God be revealed upon your life. Somebody shout the glory of God. Getting something here tonight. Come on. I'm just sharing my life with you. So in the glory, man is not seen. It's not visible. There. Isaiah chapter 6, verse number 1. Look at this. In the year that King Uzziah died, that's a whole message on its own right there. Because we all have some kings operating in our lives. Ah. King Uzziah died. What happened? I saw the Lord. Now here's the thing. How will you see the Lord when you die in yourself? If you don't die in yourself, ambitions to myself, I got offended, I got hurt, I, I, I. If that thing doesn't die, you're not going to see the Lord, the glory of God. And so there is a difference. You know, I want to come in for a, a bit of a thrust in your spirit. There is a difference between seeing the glory and being in the glory. A religious person only sees the glory, but never enters into the glory. Matthew chapter 17. Let's go here. Verse 1 says this. Look in your Bibles. Now... Uh, after six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John, his brother, led them up on a high mountain by themselves. Sorry, verse 2. <clears throat> and he was transfigured before them. Before them. Before them. They saw it. In the glory, they saw Jesus. And then in verse 3, And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to Jesus. Uh-uh. To who? No. He appeared to who? All of them. Because in the glory you see stuff. Past, present, and future. So all of a sudden, Moses appears, Elijah appears to who? To them. Talking to him. Then Peter answered and said to Jesus, Lord, is it good for us to be here? What am I doing here? It's crazy people here. If you wish, let us make you three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Now, here's the thing. In the glory of God, you will have the, you have the access to see past, present, and future things. You can access the glory of God in a very supernatural way. The last time they saw Moses was when he said goodbye to his people on the Mount of, of Moriah. Uh, is Moriah? On the mountain. He went to be with the Lord. That's the last time anybody saw Moses. Now he's all of a sudden appearing again. The last time they saw Elijah was when he went up into heaven. Now, if I, can, if I know the word of God correctly, the Bible says you're not allowed to speak to the dead. Why, why are they speaking to Moses and Elijah? They must now dead. 
They're not dead. Because Moses never died. Elijah never died. Jesus never died. And they start accessing the glory of God. And they start getting the secrets of the Old Testament. Another message on its own. But the Old Testament, Moses is a sign of the glory of God, of the Torah, of the law, of the principles and patterns. Elijah is a type of the prophetic. And they join. I'm sure Peter, James, and John, there they were speaking for hours. How is the tabernacle built? What is the glory of God like? And they explained to him all these things. But here's the thing that I want to focus on tonight. Although Peter, James, and John was in the glory, the glory didn't change them. Look at this. Because they saw the glory, they saw Moses, they saw Elijah, they saw Jesus, they saw his face shining like the sun, his eyes as bright as the sun, his whole body changed. They saw everything about him, but they never entered into the cloud of the glory. Because just two or three chapters later, Peter denies Jesus. I, was, I saw the glory. Saw the glory. I was there. Three chapters later, I denied Jesus. I don't know him. Peter, James, John, not one of them was at the cross. When Jesus needed them, not one of them was there. And let me tell you, tonight, family, I see thousands of people go to church. They come to meetings, and they fall, but they just get up, and nothing happens. They see the glory Sunday for Sunday, service for service, but they never enter in. So when the pressure comes, they deny. When the pressure comes on, they walk away. When the pressure comes, they deny. They're, yeah. There are thousands of people that fall and shake here. Yeah. And they get up and they're still as poor as always. They're still as miserable as always. No change has taken place. Nothing until the next Wednesday night for another encounter. But they just see the glory. But they never take that step to enter into the glory. Because they are, I don't know if they are afraid or anything. But how do I enter into the glory? You start worshiping Him. And you press in and you start accessing the supernatural power of God. And you say, Lord, I am not leaving this place tonight until the glory of God is upon me. Until I feel the presence of God descending upon me. I am not going to be, I'm not going to see the glory. I am going to step into the glory of God. How many glory carriers are here tonight that says, I'm going to walk into the glory of God. Hallelujah. Just thank you. Thank you. Just, just sit down. I'm, I'm done. Whew, I'm getting this. Jesus is the glory of God. There's no glory without Jesus. He is the king of glory. He is the hope of glory. In the glory, we will see the past, like I said, the present and the future. And our prayer should be this. Lord, show us your glory. Moses comes, Exodus chapter 33. Exodus chapter 33, verse 18. And he said, Lord, please show me your glory. In other words, the glory is, write this down, the glory is what? Visible. You see the glory. You can't see faith. You see the glory. And that's why I have confidence to say the church has lost... <laughs> I don't know if I should go there, but we've lost the glory because we don't see the glory. The glory is visible. Exodus chapter 16, verse 6 and 7. Look at this. Then Moses and Aaron said to all the children of Israel, At evening you shall know that the Lord has brought you out of the land of Egypt. Look at verse 7. And in the morning you shall what? See what? So the glory of God is what? Visible. So if you say the glory is on me, I want to, I want to see wealth, heavyweightness, the presence of God. When you walk into a boardroom meeting, something must change. When you get on a platform, something must happen. 
When you play in the band, you can't just play on your gifting. And I, and, and I thank God for this band here because I've, we've been walking together and say we need to go from the level of the glory, from the level of the anointing and from faith and from our giftings into the level of the glory. So when you see no words on these screens, it's not that the projectors doesn't work. It's because it's a song that has just been birthed right there. Writing songs in the glory of God. Writing it in the dimension of the supernatural power of God. And we release the glory of God. That's what we want. We want more of the God's presence. And like Moses said, I don't know about you. I don't want to see the dead raised. I don't want to see miracles. I want to see Jesus manifested because he is the Lord of glory, the King of glory. When I walk in Jubilee, I want to see Jesus. And my prayer tonight before I came to this, to this place was this, Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that people will see Jesus Christ in the person. Let the glory go. Visit us. Play that for us. And so we want to see the glory of God manifested. Say this with me. The glory of God must be manifested in my life. So what is the glory? The glory of God is what? Visible. Lazarus is four days dead. Jesus comes to her and he says this, Martha, if you believe, because faith, here's the thing, don't miss this. I'm not preaching down at faith. What I'm saying is faith is there to take you to the glory. Martha, if you believe today, you will see my glory. In the natural, Lazarus is dead. In the natural, four days dead. Lungs has given up. Worms have come, started eating him. Decomposition is taking place. Rega Moses, Moses has entered in, set in. He's dead, man. Jesus didn't resurrect him on the third day because the Pharisees still believed on the third day people can be resurrected. So Jesus rocks up four days later. The chicken has been eaten. Songs have been sung. Flowers are put on the grave. Jesus rocks up and he says, Martha, if you believe, you will see my glory. I don't know why I'm going this route, but there's somebody here that has given up on something. You say, I don't know how we're going to see the miracle. It's impossible. I've come to tell you tonight. In the natural, it's dead. In the natural, there's no way out. But if you believe, you will see the glory of God manifested in that situation. And I declare tonight, Lazarus, if you hear me, come forth. I'm telling you, the glory of the Lord is falling in this house. Sickness, go. Disease, go. What are they doing? They're responding. They're responding to the glory. Jesus. Jesus. Sobra Baba Gosita. Listen to Pastor. I'm, I'm closing with the service. I'm closing the service. Just I'm closing the service. Just softly, please. Re- just come. Just come. Stand. I want everybody to stand, please. I'm going to close the service. I'm going to pick up here next week. Sure. Lazarus, four days dead. If you believe, you'll see my glory. Let me help. Some, I see some of you want to give more or you want to give let me help you quickly because I don't want to, I'm not going to speak about this again. The glory of God is going to fall very strong. I want to teach you how to give. This is, I'm, I'm not, I didn't receive an offering yet. I mean, this is people responding to what's happening. Maybe you don't have cash. There's machines at the back. 
Just go and swipe your card. You can do snap scan. It's on the envelopes. You can just take your phone, take the code. You can give like that online or cash, whatever. But the glory of God is this whole conference, the, this, the, the, the theme of this conference is there is wealth in the glory. This is not, this is not something, what is that? this is supernatural. It's what's happening. It's what's going to happen right through the conference. The reason why the church sees miracles is because we believe for miracles. We believe for them. We come to church believing for miracles. Is that right? We believe we're going to see miracles. But we've never come to church to say, I believe I'm going to see the glory. Therefore, the glory is not manifested because we don't see the glory. Because here's the thing. People come to get a miracle. They fall, they get their miracle. They come next Sunday to church. They come the week after that to church. Bless you, mommy. Come here, mommy. Mommy, come here. It's like Jesus. She's given her last a few cents. I pray that you will lift her and her family out of every poverty in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, lift your hands, man. In Jesus' name. Glory of God. Presence of God. Presence of God. Come here. Pastor Aggie, bring me that child. I break every generational curse over this child through this offering right now. This child shall prosper. She shall be influential. She'll never go through any divorces, molestations, rape. She shall not serve the enemy. She will serve the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And I release upon her the glory of God right now. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Yeah, I'll give God a praise here tonight. Now listen. I'm done. Listen. It doesn't help we just see the glory. We have to enter in. Because people who are in the glory, I'm going to pick up here next week. People who are in the glory, they are changed. They get up and change. They get transformed. And fivefold ministers, I know where you are. I've been there. I go to conferences, go to places like this. And we really just check everything out. And we don't participate. We don't dance. We don't clap our hands. We don't lift our hands. And we, want, we expect our people to enter in, but we can't enter in. We have to be the, the forerunners. Speaking to you apostolically tonight, I had to add somebody in my face to tell me, you better get in the glory. We're not this high. It's all about Him, not about us. It's about Him. And when we die within ourselves, we see the glory of God. Now listen, this is very powerful. Get ready for this. The glory is visible. And the power of God falls when the glory comes. I have seen this. And I'm, I want to I share this with you. I've seen where the glory of God hit financial arenas in the lives of people. In the next two Wednesday nights, we're going to hit the thing in the spirit on financial breakthroughs. Because here's the thing, the glory of God is coming. The glory of God is coming. And associated with the glory comes the wealth. And so listen to this. Recently, I was in a meeting where they started speaking to, to us about how, listen to this, how it started to rain, Barbara. Rain in the building. <sighs> supernaturally We're speaking about the cloud well let's get the cloud four weeks ago five weeks ago Pastor Hannes his wife comes here she says I think it was the second time they came here they said why is people putting the sprinklers on in the church she started getting wet because she felt it's like water upon her 
I believe God's just going to happen to one. It's going to start manifest. I want to see that cloud coming into a building and start raining. We haven't seen it yet, man. You think people falling is the greatest glory. It, there's more. There must be more. Because the glory is visible. It's, you can see it. We got stuck at faith which is impossible, which is invisible. Come on, let's go from that level and we go to the glory and say, God, I want to see the glory. I want to see the glory of God. I want to see the glory of the Lord. How many? That's good. I want to see the glory of the Lord. Come on, Lord, show us in this generation. Let the legs grow again. Let the cloud of God's presence come again. So what is the movement of the supernatural? It is not a denominational thing. It is not a church thing. It's not a name thing. It is a mandate from God that I receive to stir up the supernatural, the glory of God in your city, in your church, around the world. And we are coming as a team to impart into you, to serve you, to train you, your leaders, to equip you, to do great things for God. I want you to go on our website and just click on there. I'll be interested in the movement of the supernatural in our church, in our city, and we will get in contact with you go through that and we'll pray about it and see if God wants us to come there. But I believe this, cities can be shaken by the glory of God, by the supernatural power of God. We are ready, my team is ready, we are ready to come to your city and let the continent be shaken by the glory of God. So go on our website, fill in that form and we're ready to come with the movement of the supernatural into your city and let's see the city shaken by the power of the Holy Spirit. Well, this is Pastor Nicky van der Vestes and I believe in the next couple of weeks the glory of God is going to hit you very strong. Don't miss one episode. PVR it, record it, get your friends together. Why don't you just come together in your home in the next couple of weeks. Uh, every time when we broadcast, just come together with friends and family and let the glory of God touch you right there. And let's believe that your city can be one in Jesus' name. So join us today. Go on Facebook, go on all the social media platforms and just connect with me. Become a partner with me today. Become a glory carrier in Jesus' name. Well, until next time, this is Pastor Nicky van der Westeis and signing off from the movement of the supernatural. If you have a prayer request, SMS us on 35229 and we commit to praying for you. To purchase the complete message of today's program, visit our website, www.nbcfc.co.za. Connect with us on these social media platforms and download our app from your favorite app store or visit our website for more info. Join us next time for your supernatural Kairos moment.